Nightingale shares some key features with No Man's Sky. Most prominently, they both offer infinite worlds to explore through their procedurally generated realms and planets. Nightingale is set to debut on February 20th, which is only a few days away. We'll be discussing everything known about this upcoming survival game based on what we've seen and playtested so far. Starting off with some of the basics. Created by former Bioware developers, Nightingale is a shared world survival crafting game set in a Victorian gas lamp fantasy setting. In Nightingale, we find ourselves as realm walkers, stranded in basically the multiverse of Fey realms after the collapse of the arcane portal network that connected the Empire of Humanity. The game's narrative background involves some catastrophic event that destroyed Earth and the portal network, leaving survivors to fend for themselves in a series of interconnected worlds filled with beauty and horrors. As players, we must navigate these realms, craft tools, shelters, gather resources, and fend off a myriad of creatures and malevolent forces that inhabit these lands. Let's get into the more unique features of Nightingale that really stand out. First of these are the realms. The idea of never-ending series of worlds to explore and the variety of different biomes, forests, swamps, deserts, tundras, jungles, and so on. Each biome will have their own unique visual. Enemies, plants, and wildlife, NPC factions, and points of interest. We'll be traveling between worlds by playing different realm cards to open portals. Depending on what cards we have unlocked at the time will allow us to use them at portal gateways to give us some sort of control over what realm we visit next. The cards we will be using are separated into three different categories. First are the biome cards. These determine the terrain, the look and feel of the realm as well as the environmental challenges. There are currently three biome cards, forest, desert, and swamp. With the devs stating, they will be introducing more over time. Second are the major cards. These are the cards that represent really big things that will be happening in the realm. Lastly, there are the minor cards. This is how we make little adjustments and fine tune the experience. Noting here that minor cards can be played once we're already in a realm, so there will likely be some strategies about swapping these around once we get into a realm. Similar to No Man's Sky's planet, the realms are procedurally generated and the realm card system is how we can inform the game what realm we want to open up next. I know in some games that have procedural generation, the maps can be very big and very empty. Nightingale seems to be going the opposite direction. Realms are compact and full of unique experiences. As for the survival aspect, the game begins in a traditional manner where it will engage in gathering, crafting, and combat. As we progress, we'll delve into exploration, uncovering upgrades, all the while unlocking new realm cards. Then we'll use these new realm cards to unlock portals to more perilous and rewarding realms, and repeating the process with higher level loot and gear, with the end goal of reaching the lost city of Nightingale. The game does offer several end game mechanics, including apex hunts which offer a gameplay experience akin to Monster Hunter. By playing the correct combination of cards, we'll activate a portal leading to a hunt, where we'll track and confront a formidable world boss. Additionally, there are Apex Vaults, the game's ultimate dungeon system, involving dungeon exploration, puzzle solving, and battles against Apex dungeon bosses. The crafting in the game looks really cool to me, presenting what might be the most elaborate setup in the survival crafting genre. With its plethora of crafting benches, augments, recipes, it's a topic that deserves its own video. However, to summarize, crafting begins in a familiar way, with a crafting bench that displays various recipes. Unlike other games that might offer just one basic kind of wood or stone, Nightingale introduces a variety within each tier, tied to each of the different biomes, each one bringing its own unique resource. This allows for more precise customization in crafting, letting players choose specific resources for their items. This choice matters because every resource imbues the crafted item with distinct attributes. Do you want this weapon to have more base damage, or do you want it to do more critical strike damage? What kind of elemental resistance should this piece of armor have, and so on. At the early access launch, there will be five tiers or rarities of resources, hinting at a deep level of customization and progression. It's worth mentioning, given the complexity and depth of these systems, that the user interface we've seen so far does not fully capture the intricacies of managing all these attributes. There's also a magic system in the game, where you can imbue weapons with different enchantments, like an AoE knockback, they showed vine walls, uh, and healing spells. The building system in the game, 
has its own uniqueness to it. Nightingale uses a blueprint system. We can place down the outline of a structure, costing no resources. Then, when you're satisfied with the way things look, you can manifest the building with a simple button click. This lets players separate the design aspect of base building from the resource requirements. Overall, I think it's a great innovation that will save players a lot of time. As for the multiplayer aspect, we can play both solo and multiplayer with up to six players online. The realms, however, are private, and we won't see other players in our realms unless invited. The game will be online only at the early access launch. It seems like the developers might be looking at adding private or player hosted servers in the future. Playing with friends, however, is pretty straightforward. You can exchange player realm cards, which allows you to teleport to each other's realms. Additionally, you have the option to designate a shared home world, enabling you to collaborate on a base and pull together resources. So if you want to play with friends who don't have the same schedule as you, you can, and you don't have to pay for a private server, which is great. There's also an end game player hub to meet up, trade, and compete in group dungeon content. Since its announcement, the developers have maintained a transparent approach regarding the game's progress, consistently sharing development updates, engaging with the community's questions. Their receptiveness to player input suggests a commitment to swiftly addressing issues and integrating new features throughout the early access phase and beyond. On to the pros and cons. Nightingale has an innovative theme and setting. Diverse realm system, innovative realm card mechanics, crafting is great, the building system is dynamic yet keeps it accessible, there are a lot of different multiplayer options, and the developers have remained a transparency throughout production so far. On to the not so great things. Being online only at the early access launch will limit the accessibility of some players. Also, the UI for crafting doesn't quite convey the complexity of the crafting system. Personally, I'm really looking forward to jumping into Nightingale. It comes out in less than 48 hours at the time of recording this, and it'll be available on PC via Steam and the Epic Games Store. It'll be $30 and it will have regional pricing. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. That does it for today though. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.